Hello and welcome to this short voiced over PowerPoint about seasonal survey highlight for the observatory priority pests and diseases. My name is Charles Lane. I'm a plant health consultant at Ferro Science Limited and I'm one of the plant health and biosecurity consultants for the project. Observatory is a large collaborative project led by Forest Research. It's an early warning system for tree health and we're using citizen scientists managed by the Woodland Trust to spot new pest and disease threats to the UK. There's a lot of information about the project on the website, so please visit us and find out more about what we do. Although the UK Plant Health Risk Register has identified over 1,200 different pests and pathogens, we have identified a small group of priority pests and diseases which are suitable for citizen science surveillance within the observatory project. Some of these sadly are now widely distributed like horse chestnut leaf miner, but are not occurring across the whole of the UK. Some of them have been recently introduced and spread like ash dieback, but some of them are still yet to arrive in this country like emerald ash borer. On the observatory website, you will find a large number of resources about these different priority pests and pathogens. There are field guides, posters, training videos, and there may be information, for example, about outbreaks and also links to other external resources. They're all freely available, so please go and find out more information about the priority pests and pathogens. On the observatory website, there's also the pest and disease signs and symptoms calendars. Here it has all the different priority pests and pathogens, and then looks at when you might be expected to find them across the different months. Again, you can download this for free. As we move towards summer, we're going to be thinking about the different hosts that we'd encourage you to look at in June, July, in August. In June, we'd encourage you to look at elm for elm zigzag sawfly and also look at cedar for Saracoccus suga. In July, we're going to be focusing on ash, looking at ash dieback and emerald ash borer. And finally, in August, we'd ask you to look at horse chestnut for evidence of horse chestnut leaf miner and Asian longhorn beetle. In the following slides, we'll also provide a very brief overview of each of these different pests and pathogens. But again, I would remind you to go and look for detail on the observatory website. Elm zigzag sawfly is an introduced pest from Eastern Asia. This pest poses a serious threat to our elm trees. They are already in rapid decline due to the introduced Dutch elm disease. Additional losses of elm would further threaten our elm dependent species, such as the white letter hair streak butterfly. This pest, like many of our other priority pests, causes damage to the tree during its larval stage. The larvae look like small green caterpillars and feed on elm leaves in a distinctive pattern, producing a zigzag between the leaf veins. However, it is important to note that as the larvae mature, these patterns become less noticeable and eventually they stop feeding in this manner. Other signs include dieback and loss of leaves. Saracoccus blight is a fungal disease of cedar and hemlock. Saracoccus sugae is present in the UK and it was first recorded here in 2014 and is present in all four countries. It is believed to originate in North America, but how it arrived in the UK is unknown. Research into this fungal species is ongoing as scientists aim to find out more about its life cycle and distribution. This disease causes needles to turn pink in summer, becoming brown later in the year, and it also causes shoot death and needle loss. Cankers and resin bleeds may appear on the shoot and branches as the disease progresses. On closer inspection, black fruiting bodies of the fungus can be seen on the needles and these will look like small black dots. Calara ash dieback, often just called Calara or ash dieback, is a fungal disease of ash trees. Calara has had a large impact on the UK's ash trees. The disease was first recorded in the UK in 2012 and has since spread to most of the country. It infects trees of all ages. The fungus grows inside the tree, blocking the essential water and nutrient transport systems and is often fatal. The prevalence of this disease has caused significant losses of our ash trees. Calara causes characteristic diamond-shaped lesion on the branches and stems of the trees. These tend to form around the point of a shoot or a branch joins the trunk. Other symptoms include wilting of the leaves and shoots and dieback of the branches. Later in the season, 
the small, white, cup-shaped fruiting bodies of the fungus can be seen in the leaf litter around the base of the tree. The emerald ash borer is a threat to our ash trees, many of which are already suffering from Calara ash dieback. The pest is from Eastern Asia, but has established outside its native range in the United States of America and Canada, resulting in large losses of ash trees. The range of this pest is increasing, spreading westerly across Eurasia, meaning it is getting closer to the UK. Emerald ash borer causes damage to trees during its larval phase and spends most of its life inside the tree, making it difficult to spot. The larvae feed in the tree, disrupting the tree vital water and nutrient transport systems. Symptoms include leaf loss, branches dying and epicormic shoot growth, and larval galleries under the bark. When the adults leave the tree, they produce D-shaped exit holes. An infestation is usually fatal. This can be quite rapid and small trees can die within a year. Horse chestnut leaf miner is now a common sight in England and Wales. Thought to be native to southeastern Europe, it was first found in the UK in 2002. It feeds on horse chestnut trees and shrubs belonging to the Eosculus genus. It's believed that it does not pose a serious threat and the largest impact is on the aesthetic value of the tree. Horse chestnut leaf miner is a species of moth whose larval stage live and feed in the leaves. This begins in small white or brown blotches appearing between the leaf veins. Later in the season, this can cause the whole leaf to turn brown. The pest can cause a horse chestnut leaf to turn an autumnal orangey brown in summer. The Asian longhorn beetle is a highly destructive pest of many broadleaf trees including horse chestnut, maple, sycamore, willow and plain. Asian longhorn beetle is not currently known to be in the UK, but in 2012 an outbreak occurred in Kent, resulting in a rapid eradication program. This program was successful and no evidence of Asian longhorn beetle has been found in the area since. The pest is native to Asia and could potentially enter the UK on wood products or live plants. The beetles have a juvenile larval stage in their life cycle. The larvae cause destruction by feeding and tunneling under the bark of the tree. This can weaken the tree and ultimately be fatal. Signs to look out for include circular exit holes in the bark, about 10 millimeters in diameter, sawdust-like waste material around the base of the tree, and feeding damage to the bark, shoots, and leaves. As most of the pest life cycle is spent inside the tree, detection can be difficult. If you think you've found one of these observatory priority pests and pathogens, it's really important you record the information and then report your findings. And you'll report it via the Tree Alert website run by Forest Research. For Elm Zigzag Sawfly, Sarococcus sugo, Emerald Ash Borer and Asian Longhorn Beetle, we are interested in all findings. For Calara ash dieback, we are only interested in new UK grid square findings. And the map and the website link will help you identify if these are new to the UK. And in horse chestnut leaf miner, as we know, it is already widespread in England and Wales. So we're only interested in tree alert reports in Scotland. Many thanks for listening and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. If you want to find out more information about observatory, citizen science, priority pests and pathogens and how to report them, please go to our website. So thank you once again.